This video takes a look at the AOC I2473PWY's OSD on-screen display menu system. The OSD is controlled by these touch-sensitive buttons on the base of the monitor here. There's a fairly bright um, blue power LED which is the only source of illumination there so it can make using the buttons a bit difficult in the dark. There's a left arrow, a right arrow, auto and menu. If you press the left arrow, you can access this feature called clear vision, which is AOC's um, sharpness enhancement feature. And you can set that to weak, medium, strong, or leave on the default of off. So all this does is it sharpens the image up a bit, uh, so it's sharper than it should be. So I like to leave that off. If you press the right arrow, you can control the volume of the integrated 7 watt Onkyo speakers, which are found either side of the control unit on the base. Um, they're pretty good as far as integrated uh, monitor speakers go. Uh, talk a bit more about them in the review. And if you press auto, that allows you to select the source of the monitor. The um, input source, so you can have HDMI with MHL capability, which is the default digital connection which most people will be using. You can select Miracast if you want to use the monitor wirelessly, um, or you can select DSUB or VGA, which is an analog connection. The main menu is accessed using the menu button and this is laid out in AOC's usual widescreen style. The first sub-menu you come across on this is entitled Luminance. This allows you to access basic um, functions on the monitor such as the contrast and brightness. And you can also set an eco mode which just adjusts the brightness by a preset amount. So either 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. You can also activate one of three gamma modes, which we look at in the review, in the calibration section. There's gamma 1, gamma 2 and gamma 3. There's DCR, which stands for dynamic contrast ratio, which activates the dynamic contrast feature of the monitor, which again is looked at in the review. There's an overdrive feature which adjusts the level of grey to grey acceleration that the monitor uses and you can set that to off, weak, medium or strong um, and that's looked at in the responsiveness section of the review. Next up you've got the colour setup menu which allows you to select a preset colour temperature and then there's warm which is the monitor's default setting and that sets all of the colour channels to 50. There's normal, which actually has a bit of a cool tint. There's cool, which has an even cooler tint. There's sRGB, which is actually the same as warm on this monitor. Or you can configure it with the user mode, and that allows you to independently adjust red, green and blue colour channels. There's DCB mode, which stands for dynamic colour boost and that allows the monitor to selectively oversaturate certain colours to try and bring them out. Um, full enhance oversaturates well pretty much every colour really. There's nature skin which will selectively oversaturate reds and pinks and that sort of colour. Green field which will do the same with greens. Sky blue which will bring out the blues. Um, I prefer to leave that off for a more natural image. There's DCB Demo, which is a feature that puts some people off because they don't really understand how to activate it or what exactly it's doing. But all that does is it just presents you with a split screen comparing the normal monitor settings with the DC, one of the DCB modes activated. The next menu is Picture Boost, which allows you to control AOC's infamous bright frame setting. And what this will do is it will put this little box up 
um, you can just about see in the top left, which is its default position. You can make this bigger. Um, you can change the position on the screen. You can actually have it filling the whole screen if you'd want. But the idea of this is just to allow you to independently adjust the contrast and the brightness of a specific section of the screen. Um, one thing to note here is that the brightness control isn't the same as the brightness used elsewhere on the monitor. So it doesn't actually adjust the backlight brightness. It's a digital brightness control, which is a bit different and more like what you might see on a TV. Next up there's OSD setup, which lets you change things like the language of the OSD, how long the OSD remains on the screen before disappearing. Um, I've got that set to 120 seconds, which is the longest that it'll allow, just so I can talk you through all the features here. There's a, some features are greyed out, like um, Miracast Update, which is a, a feature that you can enable when you've got the Miracast mode on. You can adjust where on the screen that the OSD actually appears, horizontally and vertically. The speaker mode, I'm not entirely sure what this does on off. I think it might control the speakers attached to the um, 3.5 millimeter audio output jack because it doesn't seem to affect the actual speakers of the monitor itself because I've tested this and it just didn't seem to do anything. You can enable or disable um, the transparency and in fact adjust the level of transparency of the OSD. As you can see here I'm sort of struggling a little bit with these touch sensitive controls. So you know we can uh, make it appear more or less transparent depending on how you like it to look. You can set a break reminder um, which will remind you after you've after you've used the monitor for an hour it'll, it'll tell you that you've been using it for an hour and perhaps it's time for you to take a break. So it's an annoying little feature you can have on if you'd like. The final submenu is extra and that allows you to select the monitor's input manually or allow it to select it itself. There's a little section that's greyed out here, auto config, um, and that's something that's used for VGA connections and that will allow the, um, the monitor to fill up its screen space automatically, um, which is something that digital connections will do anyway unless you've got the overscan set incorrectly in the graphics driver. Um, there's an off timer feature which allows you to select a time in hours between 1 and 24 after which the monitor will um, automatically go on to standby and it'll remind you it's doing this about 10 minutes before so it doesn't completely take you by surprise. There's basically um, plug and play functionality of the monitor which you can enable or disable and you'd only really want to disable this if you're using some strange uh, sort of old operating system that uh, doesn't seem to work properly with that. Or you can use the reset function to change everything back to the factory defaults. And there's also this little reminder here of the resolution that the monitor uses as well as its um, horizontal and vertical refresh rates. So there you have it, that's the OSD menu system of the AOC I2473PWY.